How do we find our place in the firmament? Men and women have searched for something to believe in for thousands of years, a narrative, religions and rituals that bind us together, faith and belief in something. But when was the first time that we demonstrated the ability to believe in the abstract? Neil McGregor, the former director of the British Museum, now in charge of a new museum project in Berlin, has assembled artifacts dating back 40,000 years to trace our need for belonging in his book, Living with the Gods. So in this increasingly secular age, what do we actually believe in? Well, Neil McGregor is here to help answer these profound questions through artifacts. Neil McGregor, first of all, Living with Gods. I mean, you searched and we'll come on to art, uh, the artifacts, but you search for the, the point at which people went beyond simply surviving as individuals and found some kind of common ground. Yes, we wanted to look for the first evidence of people thinking of something beyond themselves. And we found it in this wonderful sculpture made about 40,000 years ago in South Germany of a man with the head of a lion. And it's the first thing we know where people have made an image of something that can't exist. And this is a mammoth tusk, and it's a leap, it's a leap of imagination. And, and you say in the book that the artistic endeavour was so great that it simply wasn't something that was whittled for playing with. No, this is a great work of art. It took hundreds of hours to make from somebody with great skill. And the question is, why would a society that is on the edge of survival devote so much resource to a story, an idea and abstraction? And we think that that's because this is about an idea, a, a story of where you sit, where this group sits in the world and how it goes on beyond itself. And that's very strengthening for a group. And then you come on and you talk about the idea of the dead being with us and how that was a very strong uh, image that people held with them and it was very strong to their culture. And one of the most extraordinary, I think, artefacts you have are the Peruvian mummies, which are literally bodies which the soft tissue has been taken away and they sit with the living. Yes, being a mummy in Peru is much more fun than being a mummy in Egypt because you get taken out. <laughs> and for the big decisions, you bring the ancestors into the room, sitting at the table with us, because that will let you remember that you're only part of a big story and you're also thinking about the future. So it's a bit like having Gladstone and Disraeli at the cabinet meetings. Would that change how we make policy? But it wasn't just, uh, as you say, the Peruvian mummies, it was Egyptian mummies. And actually, if you look at rituals in the Roman Catholic Church, the idea of relics connecting the past, informing the way that people congregate and behave in the present and indeed the future is still a very strong idea. It's a idea. very strong idea because the, the, every Roman Catholic Church has the, the bones of a saint, the relics of a saint. So that you're praying with the dead and you're living with them and thinking about the future. And it's a very strong idea to assert that you're part of a big continuing narrative and you belong across time in a way that we can so easily forget. And then um, you, you, there, there, there is an image of a place in Turkey, which is only really discovered in the mid 20th century, which shows that, of course, what you're discussing in this book will change, will change with our knowledge and our knowledge and we find other artefacts and so forth. But this particular place in Turkey, you believe, is the earliest actual religious site? It seems to be. It's a huge site on the borders of Syria and Turkey. And it's a site that wasn't used for habitation. People seem to have gathered there only to worship. For, and it's about 12,000 years old, so it's 6,000 years older than Stonehenge. And so it's, it's got so much to give up, but one of the things it has given up already is this idea of it was, it was ordained to be made. And you have these four you, gods with the copper nails that you found. Well, not you actually found, <laughs> they, they exist. They exist. Um, well, and what do they tell us? They tell us it's, the, it's from a, a temple in what's now Iraq, uh, for which we have text, so we know exactly what we were trying to do. And you buried these gods in the ground, say this is a space set apart. Here you will not just be thinking about your own needs and now, you'll be thinking about your place in the great scheme of things and for the future. You're setting a space apart to think differently and think about the future. And then you go to, I mean, I'm jumping through these, but obviously there's this wonderful uh, uh, artefacts from Australia, which is essentially thousands and thousands of fish on a long uh, piece of bone into which, re into which the remains of people have been put. Yes. And this is to connect community and 
people. Yes, the Aboriginal belief is that the great life force of the place animates everything that lives in nature, the plants, the animals and the people, and they all belong together. And when you die, your remains are put into this hollowed-out tree and round it are painted aspects of the life force, here the fish. So the people, the community, the landscape are all one. And you come right up to date with the most extraordinary and beautiful and very moving picture at the end, which is a, a carpenter at Lampedusa uh, fashioned a cross from a boat that sank, that you know, more than 300 Somalis and Eritreans died. That ended up in St Paul's Cathedral. He gave one of the crosses to the British Museum. What does that say about belonging? It says something very important. This man, the carpenter in Lampedusa, wanted to say to the people arriving, you, are, you have got hope. He took the broken bits of their boat and made it into the cross, the symbol of hope. And he said what we have to try to find is a story where the people who come into our, world, our community are part of our story a new narrative that embraces the arrive, those who arrive among us. And finally, you've been uh, advising, been very involved in a new museum in Germany. And I wonder, looking at what happened in Rio de Janeiro very, very recently, which was a terrible fire, 20 million artefacts and you know, you know, elements of the natural world in this museum gone. Can you have, can you understand cultural heritage without the artefacts? No, you can't. Uh, you need the things. And the tragedy of the fire in Rio is not just that the, 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 the objects uh, of the peoples who had lived in Brazil, the different peoples, uh, were destroyed, but also so many of the great specimens of the natural history, the plants, the animals. The whole narrative of the place has been destroyed and we've lost something that can't be recovered. Thank you very much, uh, Neil McGregor, and Living with the Gods is out now.